bit of a tell, and it's something that Sotekas is going to have a look at. Knows that he's going to be to sort of give it up a little bit. Looks like they're already setting up for some sort of retake, and well, it's not going well at all. They've lost a couple of jewels straight off the bat, leaving just Bazzi and right Ade remaining. Trying Last to player standing. Effort. He's not normally someone who plays this right now, so I was thinking maybe he'll be a little bit more passive, a little bit more calm in the way he kicks things off. Not at all. Thinking an after plan. He's just trying to make it as costly as possible for Crazy Raccoon on a round like this, but just losing at one player to take us. Vibe Wall isn't really a factor here. It's over on the B side, put down fairly early to bait that rotate. And so they're holding pretty close. And Munchkin now is making it more awkward for yeah. Vikings. They don't want to really lose that much. The round is pretty much confirmed uh, to be Vikings, but you just don't know at this point now. It's got so costly. Yeah, that's really not a bad round at all, but not really doing too much. They've got that elevated plant, and you know what, Ryan? They've been a pretty good spot. FRZ again. He's going to find that initial pick. Now, Crazy Raccoon, as we saw I mentioned, this is a bit of a bonus round they're facing off against. And GTN is trying to find something back here. The peek through, it's a little risky, but Fisker gets away with it. Giving them a chance to try and fight back into this round. Realistically, with that after plant still in play, they need somebody to find the kill. They've gone for the wall up. They've tried to start the defusal. It hasn't worked out at all, and they're slowly being picked apart, leaving it down to still a horrible situation left for Ade, and he just has to try and fade away here. No time left. It's a big round for Vikings. As I said, that was only a half investment, Ryan. And it was the fact that Crazy Raccoon as well playing so purely retake. They're not going into a position where they're going to try and fade. Patient from Crazy Raccoon. They've already brought back three, even four members onto B. That one piece of utility has found so much for them, but it doesn't seem to matter. Still, both double entries come through, but the wall is broken. They're actually going to be able to get the res off, sort of. Did he actually get him up? No, he didn't. So he's died and his teammate's probably going to die as well. The time may be ticking, but the afterplan likely to come through and GTN just hitting absolutely everything. It's left onto Ade once again, Ryan. One versus three, and he's not going to find anything on the cross. A decent run. too bothered about using and trying to make sure this round is as clear as possible. It's always going to be helpful. And well, this has managed to find one. They also popped a Hunter's Fury. They are using a lot for a round that ultimately should be an easier one, and Neff has now snuck his way through as well. This has come back to one of the closest situations. He'll need to hit some more shots, and he's doing it with the pistol. It's left into a 1v1 scenario. The Sovers facing off each other, the other looking to try and clear out the doppelganger. Sassy's going to make his move to the site. He's actually already tagged out. So a shot from this marshal could be enough to win the round for Bazzi, but he has to try and find him almost in the timing, oh, no! but he missed it, he rushed twice, but finally gets it through. Oh, I just had a mini heart attack. Be very aggressive, racking up the kills. He's been pulled back a little bit. Now that the op's online on this, I'm sure Jonas has various versions of how to clear this, that Sassy left. might actually <laughs> oh, catch He'll see their with. feet, right? Because he's put it high enough. I think he should have done, unless he hasn't put it on the top right boxes, but that would, they've gone over him. I feel like he should have been able to see, yeah, he was looking down, so I feel like he should have been able to see them. Instead, they bypassed his Viper's Pit and he's slowly being surrounded. This has gone completely wrong from Ade. I feel like he put it in the right spot. He's now almost stuck in no man's land and they're starting to try and hump him. Somehow, though, he is still surviving and they're just unable to clear. This has turned into just one man standing and sassy. He gives it a nice attempt. Bazzi, but he's already used the Aldrin and the Recon Dart. Fisker just holding on. Kings haven't looked quite as strong. Neth as well, just remaining in this angle. The Fragment will deny them the extra space. They've got to clear him out, but they do. Turning it back into a 3v3 scenario, a likely after plant, unless Bazzi does something pretty risky. He's actually just going to swing it. There was nobody watching the wall. They just allowed him to go all the way out and kill off the planter. Turning this into a 3v2 situation, leaving that retaker a much more likely stance and even starting to break their way through the rule. I think Sassy knows it. They need to get a little bit more aggressive here. They need to pick off one of these players and instead it's left all onto GTN. A one versus three oh. scenario, but he swings a little bit too wide. Tagged down to just 65. He's got to try and go up above. He needs to win one of these jewels and he brings it damn close. But it will be crazy raccoon. Got ults on either side. That has not gone great for Fisker. This is incredibly aggressive in their push up. Both teams with a weaker buy, but it has somewhat worked out. They've come out with a positive trade. GTN, though, has used this time to garner a lot of space. He's even going to hear them oh, tapping no. the hole. A chance for both, and he will get them as well. Now, they, now, 
Well, they have a rough idea where he can come from. And it's either side. They're playing very far off of this. I mean, if they've got any post plant utility that at all. just bait? Yeah, it must be. <laughs> it doesn't really, like, if, if depending on what side Addy comes from, it doesn't stop him from doing either of the two options, really. That's just the only bit of utility available there, just to slow up, to, to stop him, to spray. They're not very confident that he's not on it. Got their lineup. They all the nine against that. He's just sticking this defusal, and thankfully, Sadak will eventually take these sort of risks, like making those rotations back and trying to stack up one of the sites. Because realistically, you're not going to win this round or even do damage in this round in any other way. But it does mean for the umpteenth time this game, we've got an arm farm on the A side. Bye -bye. Interesting what they use now, especially now that Munchkin's able to get one kill. If he can get another, he can't. Sadak's just watching, the peak gets wider and wider. And this is, again, Vikings having that big advantage. They have the economy, they have an open A site, which is where they've been most successful. They're still losing two players to the lower guns. And even more now, the Bazzi's managed to get the Vandal in hand. Oh, I, I don't know that if there's anything that Sutekes can even do here. He's being blocked off, so he can't actually swing, and he's hoping to try and find something off the wall bank, but he gets absolutely nothing. And ultimates have to be used. Round 12. Resurrect for either side, and Neff now could bait it out a little bit. Sutekes dying in such a deep spot. Really, the Resurrect is not going to be used on him on the side of Vikings, this side at least. Fisker oh, actually peeking out. Sadak catches on to him. And now this is a dangerous spot for Munchkin, and he's looking around, still manages to connect when he needs to. The mechanical skill is still there. Fragment's gonna try and delay despite being planted, but he goes off the site, and it's just really crushing Vikings into a spot they're holding on. Neff picking up the operator, now using it himself left. from Fisker's corpse. Silence. Sassy holding closer. Yeah, it's starting to look workable. The problem is the spike back. still isn't on the ground. They need to put this into place, the pop flash, he blinded himself, Munchkin, but it doesn't matter, there's 15 seconds, it's all down to the attackers to try and make a move here, they've managed to clear on Munchkin already, looking to try and swing in onto Buzzy, but I don't think there's going to be any chance for them here, Spike dropped onto the ground, and Sassy, it's an impossible task, or at least it seems, and Ade plays it to perfection, it is going to be the return of Crazy Raccoon, but struggling a little bit on this map, it's not like Crazy Raccoon won it, but it did go to overtime in that case. Yeah. That's a pretty good testament in itself, and Munchkin, you want to see him come online as well, whether it's the utility, the firepower, finds an opening. Tr trying to make sure there's no space lost as they get themselves into those afterplant positions, although not really much utility to use in the afterplants. It's just going to come down to the firefights, but luckily for Crazy Raccoon, they're winning all of them. It is GTN and Sassy, probably the two players you'd want in this sort of clutch scenario, but I, I feel like they need a miracle, right? Sassy now trying to lead the line. GTN with the Sheriff couldn't find the kills, and then suddenly maybe Sassy's found a bit more than he bargained for. Ne trying to piece a little bit more on A. Zero point's not really going to find all that much. The recon, Dart, the Eldra, and actually just show him where FRZ is. He's not bothered actually. He's stepping aggressively, and the shock down, I think, narrowly misses it. Still, they're going to get the open up. They need to clear this angle because the wall has not really covered them off at all. He has been spotted. That last Spike bullet just takes the clean off. Neth is gone. Spike is on the ground. Attackers here, this becomes a very awkward scenario. We've had the ultimate thrown in as well from Munchkin, so definitely a bit more costly than maybe they would have liked. And there was some decent investment into this one, into the really rifles as dead. well. Yeah, I don't really blame them. I don't think you want that man getting back up, although I'm certain they'll hear it if that's the case. And wow, well, it's now left into a two versus three scenario. Of course, it is still somewhat of a bonus round for Crazy Raccoon, but. I think winning this is starting to look Players difficult standing. unless some mistakes are made and well, Abbe, he's at least trying to bring something home here but Sassy will be in of space but Vikings are so aware of it. It's a nice flash in to bring Fisker into the fold and there might be another one to bring on through. More good Silver oh! utility and the wall bang is great to just take Fisker out. The Resurrect forced to be used and right now it's Vision in a barrel oh, and great no. throw on this Fury. They even had a slow as well, just to make it. I think that was actually, that might have been the attacker slow. Top from that zero point. Now he just wants to sort of push up left. Sadak as well, wanting to strong arm these higher points, get some form of intel. And that close hold actually coming in from Fisker is going to eventually get punished from Mephazi oh, no. once he gets a glimpse. Yeah, they're running out of time. 15 seconds. Spike not planted. They need to make their way to no the side. I, I well. Yeah, I think this comes into a save. 
And if not, it's going to be left. so much they need to try and achieve. But Munchkin coming in on the flank could be the difference maker. The spam through, the spinning to try and get the plant down has failed miserably. And while that clock was just far too low, Vikings, they win the round out. Really going through chase. He's also having one hell of a game at the same time. The rifle actually peeks through. Oh, talking about players having a solid game, oh, he is definitely gone. one of them. Dash out. Point. Is the spike actually going to try and be contested at this point? No, but there's a little bit of space behind. GTN is constantly trying to push. That's a lot of space that he could take as well towards yellow. And Fisker now gets the kill down to 20 HP. He's the one holding here. The utility and the rest of the team is starting to follow through in the end. Vikings have done well to just keep Razor Akuna Bay here. Rotation still not through yet from FRZ, but it might not matter. Sassy, he's almost just doing this all on his own. A one-man retake to try and close things out. Bazzi lands the shot, but Sassy is there. He's having a one- In his direction. He has that dismiss, yeah. but that's a lot of ground to cover. Bazzi's just ahead of everybody else. One other place that players can realistically be, and it's aggressive on A. Now, there's no point again will come through. Will reduce the ability well, for their opponent's abilities. And they're actually going to use the Viper's Pit. There's already a lot invested into this round. I don't know how much of a counter there's going to be here for Vikings. Might just be a case of wait. The tippy toes are going to be seen on that one. GTN, that's a nice kill onto Munchkin from distance. There's no supporting utility there, but there wasn't much left from Munchkin at the end of the day either. Sassy now trying to push on through. Nep is holding that line. Just in this meander oh. of different smokes, he's looking to ace it. This is a big round from Neff. He's managed to find the timing twice to pull off multiple double kills and it's left all onto Sudakas and he's just looking for exits. He's trying to kill them all off as they try and exit the site and the fact is Fisker is dead here. Yep, no there should be no way that he oh, dashes to escape and no. So oh, it's three players over from Vikings. They're happy yeah. to hold on to this site and it's not been that bad on the defense. They have so much information. Why wouldn't they gamble players at this point? They've already managed to find out that you there's nobody pushing on A. Now Munchkin able to take that <laughs> shot. Okay, GTN. That was dirty. That was a nice shot. The res is coming through on the other side. Sassy. No way he manages to get away with that. And the best thing is, he's also got his ultimate. The spam coming through isn't going to find anything. But he instead will be able to pop that Hunter's Fury and clear out Neth. Bringing this round back from the fray. Turning it into a 5 versus 3. Now, this duel could be everything. Now, the patience of FRZ actually means he's going to get the kill for free. He picks off Munchkin, and although there's after point utility coming through, it doesn't look like it's worked at all, unless that was some counter utility that had been thrown out. It hasn't denied them, and Adi realizes uh, there's nothing he can do at this point. He's just hoping just the save. snake bites can do something. Expected to be pushed there, but he just buys so much time for the yeah. rest of Vikings, and it's these kind of like major macro there. Also, the buy from Crazy Raccoon stinks. So yeah. They're going to need someone to be a hero. Luckily, Fisker might have just done that. He goes swinging. Sudakas is there for the trade, and they don't know that Sassy is here. He's still just hiding in the back lines. This time, they are watching for the flank. The problem, though, is that there's three players currently stacked within the A site. The faster rotation from the Vikings leaves this as a very tough spot. And in fact, they're not ready for these swing peaks. If anything, at this stage, I feel like Crazy Raccoon have to back off. Might not even be given that opportunity. Stegas is still holding on to this high ground. This toxic screen is just doing what they want it to do. Left. It's forcing Crazy Raccoon into these positions, okay. but now it's no longer going to be a factor at this point. Two versus three. Now Resurrect is available for Nev. But this close hold from Vikings... Actually, <laughs> never mind. They're just... They think it's another site. They're moving away. Yeah, there's so little time left, though. The, the second they hear this, there's going to be a rotation. I am very surprised that Neth is currently <laughs> holding the stinger. Like, this is not the gun that you want to be having. And Ade going down, he now has to pull off maybe the greatest clutch you've ever seen with this weapon. I know Lothar might have a smile if he starts going for a few little burst plays, but I think the chances of that are slim to none. Hits the dink on the first. There are, there are actually some tanked players. There is absolutely no way. And Sassy is going to clear him out before that. It didn't matter what agent he was playing. The only concern is he's only played it once in an official ever. And Sassy, it's the first time he's played Breach. And not a bad start. The two kills flashing in there. Just actually get the setup on Sadak. It's a prime game in Fallers. We saw few and far between of those on I love that alarm bot in Garage, which is going to have that impact. Sassy using that utility to stall. And Sadak, the Nano Swarm, the stun combo completely rips apart Fisker.
Yeah, and he was the only one that entered the site. The rest of the team a little bit delayed, looking to play that almost old school B site style. The timing could work nicely though for Munchkin. He's managed to sneak his way through, but again, the duel is going to go the way of Vikings, leaving them with a man advantage. Sassy low and no utility on Lambie. He rolling still thunder. managed to hit the timing, and now he's got that rolling thunder, as you mentioned. He could decide just to use it here and basically end this round in his track. Medusa is screwed here, surely. But he somehow still survives! No, 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 no. As well. It's left into Last the one versus standing. one, and only a pistol Leave available me. for FRZ. Are they already going to look to pull him off the spike? And with the rifle in hand, you have to favor him here. Just playing that time, lurking back further. And there should be no chance here for FRZ. He's just going to hope to try and stick this one all the way, oh, actually. No. Lands the shot, least! And he's going to connect! Does he have time to get the defuser? I think he does as well. So much control with the stars and nano swarms over on the B site. They've then got two players sitting up, and that's not the start you wanted. Well, I was wondering how they were going to utilize the lockdown in this round. They're not. Now there's a bit of trepidation from Vikings now. Lean it over to Wave. And I like that guide in light. Gets some information, but Visca uses the opportunity Ooh. to line up. That is a really nice grab that comes in from Adi. He's far away from the action. And now he's going to be able to, to plant the spike now just behind the rest of the team. Neff needs to get this kill here. But Satekas might have a... If he gets down A long, nobody checks him. <gasps> oh, oh no. no. Oh. oh, the timing could be the worst thing in the world. It's a bit of a whip, but he gets away with it. Turned down to just one player. Now he's got at least a bit of utility. The ultimate online to at least try and delay Sadak as much as possible. And, well, the turret is not really going to help him too much. In fact, it's going to be blasted moved. away to the other side. This now looks like a very unlikely scenario for Sadak to be able to win. Neff looking for that swing out. He is actually going to get tagged up, but with the Operator in hand, they're just hoping for a peek, and he is playing this perfectly, delaying as much as possible. Decided, you know what? Just going to try and escape out of this one. Use my utility to deny. Quick rotation coming through from Sassy to support. Bit of a whiff, though, from Fisker. In fact, he's going to get stuck and then caught by Sassy. That has not gone well at all. The man who opened up the last round, but the lurk from Medusa has managed to bring things back into a workable position. The lockdown going to be placed in the corner, and he gets away with it. Still, though, a three versus three. And actually, there's a counter lockdown instead. Push coming up, hoping to try and garner some space. It's a kill coming through, and Sadak even manages to delay it. Meaning... And now we're starting to see Viking splinter onto the different sites to see if they get a bit of a feel. And he manages to just get the timing perfectly right, but he isn't checking to take us. He's just aware of him playing in that nice back C site position. And you would have expected, or at least wanted those two players of Nef and Adi to play together, to play off of each other, especially now that Vikings are split so thin. So take it, like, the fa Vikings, you just... I want to see that clinical nice. site come out of under for Sassy is one of the reasons why they're holding off. Yeah, they are ready to just try and stun them as they enter the site, and look how aggressive they're being. They haven't actually spotted Fisker, though. Are they going to expect him in the smoke? Absolutely not. He just manages to survive and cause them problems, but they've pushed back in to FRZ. Still looking to try and make their move, and I'm a little bit worried for Sassy hiding in this corner. He's been stunned up, and nobody's checked it. And the second this goes down, it could be the Ember Munchkin with a last second turn. A big round from him individually. Three kills coming up, and OFRZ, well, the last clutch was unlikely. Let's see what he can do here. You never, <laughs> you just never really know with these two teams, to be fair. It's not expected. Now FRZ just, Crazy Raccoon just not showing up anything. They know they're just keeping this money in order. It's good. It's not flawless because Medusa was caught out on that lurk from FRZ of all players as well. The wrap round is slowly coming in. Munchkin was the one that opened the site and now he's the one at the back as well to try and wrap around, but it's not really going to happen on that angle. Staying in that position, the smoked it, also has some other Astro utility to help. The Eldron trying to give up his position so Sassy can lurk in. They don't know he's here. Oh, not again. He manages to just get the timing so right, but it is the trades this time from Crazy Raccoon that work out. A long flank coming through, and GTM likely just going to want to try and bring this operator through. And Juice is having a good time at least. He finally gets into the server. From where these attackers are roughly going to be. Right they can just wait out time. They're slowing this right yeah. now. 
this is what worries me. These are the calls that sometimes cause some issues again. We're going to see some solid utility though. Sudikas is stuck in the corner of Visca. He's just going to wipe them both out. They've set this man up and he has succeeded. The utility that has come in over the last few rounds from Crazy Raccoon has been solid. And now Medusa is just waiting. That knife in the back. Sure, FRZ is going to find a kill, but at this stage, I'm, I'm looking at this round again. Signings today were seen like suggest, I think it was, moving away from new to within data, at least previously. This though is where I, again, I, I feel like Vikings become more dangerous. Looking again a little bit more aggressive and now they found their own. Crazy Raccoon picked this round up. You then false Vikings are really tough money going into the last round of this half. Now is now trying to up the tempo. He's full armor, full help. The stun is nice. The follow up isn't going to be there on the right corner. GTN, he does go down, but FRZ is ready to trade and then so. He's just going to look to hold his ground. They eventually clear him out and the lockdown might give them at least a little bit of extra space. But for the remaining defenders, they don't really need to try and over fight. He got the kill. Five planted. He, he, he just got the kill straight through the smoke. That's given them a real opportunity here. Sassy and Sudekas coming from completely different angles. Still a little bit of utility to try and clear them out. And I feel like Sudekas is going to have everything to do looking to try and come in from behind. But I like this. Crazy Raccoon getting aggressive. Trying to take the control from in front. And they are spotting that there's no one around this angle. They know that there has to be someone within head of them. Someone coming in on the flank. And Medusa lands the shot. It's left all onto Sassy. A great recovery in this round from Crazy Raccoon. And they, they do have themselves the lockdown. Now, although this has been somewhere he's played a lot, it's never actually been spotted, but again, it's Munchkin. Having that read, finding themselves that opener, they're going to try and wait and hold on to at least a little bit of control. The timing couldn't be better for Ade. Completely clearing out Sassy. Now they can afford to just back out of the lockdown. They have such a huge advantage. His Sonic actually goes in with the Ares and manages to get himself a kill, but the trades are coming in thick and fast. A good spot currently for Crazy Raccoon to be in. The spike still hasn't gone down at this point, no. Medusa now with the operator in hand is just sort of watching keenly. FRC is going to push out of this and the trades are there, it's nice stuff. Yeah, now it's just all five of these players from Vikings rolling in together on C long. Munchkin has been waiting here the whole time with his recon dart to play off of it. All of these smokes placed down. And it's just not really that much. I like this from GTN. He knows that that's the kind of play the Munchkin's going to make. He closes that distance. Moves them desperately low. A chance here for the defenders to try and turn the tide into a three versus three scenario. Spike's still not planted, and they are slowly surrounding them. This round is going to be ended on Jules and Jules alone, and it's left just on to Sassy. Still though, he manages to land the headshot onto the first. Both players desperately low, and Sassy bring. Have a fast flank. This is actually a brilliant adaptation from Crazy Raccoon, but he's been caught by the alarm bot. They know that he's here. However, this was the plan all along. And by the looks of it, Nobody's they're not looking. actually watching for it. So Fisk is going to get himself the first one for free. Now it's a case of Crazy Raccoon using these two positions in tandem, really. It's just one player from Fisk or all on his own. And I like this wraparound from Satekas to try and weed him out a little bit. He's still getting kills. He's moving on to the site. There's still players going down for Crazy Raccoon. But Satekas, that late lurk. Is he going to hear that steps? Like, how is he going to use that utility? He's still holding up on using the smoke. It's only when he hears the dash and the flash coming in that it now starts to come in. And yet again, he's just trying to play close in these right positions. If this isn't cleared, it oh. kind of half assed it. And Sadak, again, has to be the sort of person that makes this situation better for Vikings because Crazy Raccoon punished the bad fundamentals there. And the dodge of the flash grants them to Sudekas. It's perfect. Hits the timing, bang on. And it's left all onto Munchkin. He gets nothing. Sadak with a huge round, as you mentioned. This lurk could be everything in this round if he kills off. Medusa, then even just Lockdown. the chance of a retake. Yeah, that's it. That might be it. All on its own. Just that one left. sneaky little play that gets them that extra control. That was the play there coming through from Crazy Raccoon. They were hoping to lock down on the retake. That's why they gave up C. But just the intelligence of Sudikes. Well, it looks a bit silly when there's no one behind it, but he was hoping to try and knife someone just waiting off the back. I wonder how often that will happen, if at all, in this <laughs> tournament. Because we kind of know the trick at this that point. Like got everyone. <laughs> yeah, I think it was a grab as well that came in from Satekas and at least have a purchase, a couple of ultimates online. This is going to be a little bit different. A pace change coming through. You can see the lurk from Sudekas just setting his team up with the utility. And actually, Sadak, he's wanting to try and fight this. He wants Zade out of the back of the site. He's got so GTN good. to support him. 
They're not leaving anything to chance, but Medusa's given them a lifeline. A kill, the flash not landing, and he takes a second to his name. Fisker's also somehow managed to get one with the shorty, but now he needs a clutch. A 1v2 to keep them in this first match. Otherwise, the lower bracket is where Crazy Raccoon will have to lie and wait for their opponent to try and meet them. Fisker, he has a chance here. The first kill goes his way, but there's utility to deny him for that extra piece of time. He's watching the right angle, but he's going to look away. Fisker will keep them in the map as he will have the defusal through and a seventh for Crazy Raccoon. I, I don't know how recreatable that round is going to be. Like, you basically relied on two kills coming through from Munchkin in a position where he should have probably in response. They'll know that there's a couple of players at least still holding in to long and oh, no. it into what will be an A execution. It's so different to the last round that we just saw where Crazy Raccoon were happy to play patient. Now they're starting to peak and over aggress. Now Garage is under the control of Adi Show, but he's far away from the action. The stone on Medusa, he's under a lot of pressure. And that grab Beautiful. play, it's on the same side. GTN, he clears up the backside. These last two players, Hunter's Fury, does tag onto a few players at the end, but there's no kill, there's no real Thanks information. Two versus five retake. We've also got the Divine to try and split things up, but then comes through the Rolling Thunder. So much to deny them here, and they're letting GTN go for the ace. I said he had a slow start to this one, but they now have the clear. Sudikas took.